Hi, I'm Daniel, and I spend my life hitchhiking around the world. My first big hitchhiking trip was from Prague to Madrid. I've also done France to Norway, I've done Warsaw to Budapest, I've gone in Africa from Malawi to Namibia, I've gone in Mexico from Monterey to Oaxaca, in Canada from Toronto to British Columbia, a little bit of Turkey, Vietnam from Saigon to almost the border with China. And right now I'm supposed to be going from France to Vietnam, but because of COVID-19 I had to stop my trip. One question for you, why do you hitchhike? Because it's the coolest way to travel because you get to meet random people and go to some small tiny towns and really get to know the authentic culture and the places. Growing up in sunny Los Angeles, California, 29 year old Daniel was always exposed to a melting pot of cultures and that's what originally got him interested in traveling. When he was 18, he went to Israel just like I did at the same age and that's when he discovered hitchhiking. When I was 18, I lived on a kibbutz in Israel for six months and it was just outside of Jerusalem and that was actually my first time hitchhiking and it was only because it was the easiest way to get to the city center. But I also remember thinking, wow, this is actually a cool experience. I got into the car with these complete strangers and it was kind of cool. In 2013, Daniel volunteered at a farm in Germany with a guy who hitchhiked all over Europe and he was sold on the idea. His first big trek was from Prague to Madrid, and he's done it for a large part of every year since then. So now we're on the way to uh, Sergio's girlfriend's house. Rule number 17 of hitchhiking, if an Italian family asks you to have lunch with them, you say yes. Even if I had a billion dollars, I would still be hitchhiking, because hitchhiking has given me experiences that I would never in my life have had otherwise. It's amazing to wake up every morning and not know who I'll meet and where I'll end up. Like I wake up and then I just put my thumb out and I don't know who's gonna stop. So when you're hitchhiking, do you always use your thumb? Actually, it depends on the country. So in the West, like this is what we do. In Israel, they go like this. Okay. When I was in Africa, they go like this. Yeah. And in Vietnam, they go like this. And in Albania, they would take, like this is the symbol of their flex, but I would go like this. And also, a lot of times when I'm hitchhiking, I'll be eating an apple or banana, because I found the chance of people stopping is much better. Actually, once a psychologist stopped for me, and when I asked her why she stopped for me, she told me the reason is that, the reason is because I was eating an apple while she saw me waiting. When I'm hitchhiking, I always try to wear soccer jerseys because the likelihood of people stopping is much better. So this is a Mexico soccer jersey, and then this is the national Croatian soccer jersey, and they're both given to me by people that I met in Mexico and in Croatia. So today I got the best answer about why somebody stopped with hitchhiking. I stopped because of the Croatian shirt. <laughs> because it made you feel comfortable. Yes. So this one is from Botswana. I got this shirt because I was here for their 50th year anniversary. And then this shirt is from Zambia. Uh, when I was there, everybody was wearing this shirt because this guy was campaigning to be president. This is a book that I keep, and everyone that I meet hitchhiking or just on my travels, I give them this book and I told them to write the date and the place and whatever they want in their language. So this one, for example, is from Kosovo and Albania. I have no idea what any of it says because it's all in Albanian, but it's like having my story told to me by the people that I meet and not just me. And you don't know what it says? I have no idea what it says, and I have this book in Spanish, Italian, German, French. And what, what would you say is the average amount of time in all the hundreds of hitchhikes you've done, what's the average time? I would say 20, 30 minutes. That's pretty good. It's not too bad. And if you have a smile and a positive attitude, and you're wearing a soccer jersey, and you're eating an apple, and you do all these little things, it really helps, and people do stop. I really love the human interaction, the authentic connection. Because in today's society where everybody's on their phones, it's very rare that people meet and like talk, you know, face to face. And so there's many times that people actually invite me to their homes. And that's happened so many times. Love and it, I love the idea that we get into the car and he looks at me and I look at him and we both see in Google Maps four hours till we reach the destination and we both think, 
Man, I hope this is a cool person because I'm going to spend the next four hours of my life with this complete stranger. Dana, what is one message you want to say to the world? A lot of people are scared of hitchhiking, but I really want you to understand that it is the coolest way to travel. And once the local people understand why you're hitchhiking, once you explain to them you want to get to know them and their culture, they want to show you a good time in their country, so it comes back to you. And I highly suggest everybody out there to try hitchhiking at least once in your life. You won't regret it. It's such a cool thing to do. Great, man. That was awesome. I have a bunch of travel tattoos. This one is from Vietnam. I got the motorcycle because I was hitchhiking there primarily by motorcycles. This is what I had on my sign. Zin Di Ni Ho To. Whatever it means, the people stopped when they saw this. This is from a town that I was, I loved in the south of Italy. It was called Tropea. I was there in 2017. This one was in Malawi. I was in a town called Monkey Bay. So this tattoo was from Mexico. I was in a town called Zipolite and there was this old woman there that had this bluish green dress with these red flowers and every day she would stand there making tortillas and I don't know what it was about her but I just thought I just just watching her make these tortillas and thinking to myself she had been doing the same thing for the last 50 years it was really cool to me best and worst countries the best country for me was Vietnam because a it was the easiest B because it, it was very challenging because it was the first time that I was in a country that they didn't most people didn't speak English and it wasn't a Western culture so there were a lot of challenges and difficulties hitchhiking there but it made it actually very it made it actually a very fun experience it was the first time that two people stopped at the same time and actually argued with each other about who was gonna pick me up what about worst countries the worst country um, the hardest countries are Spain and Italy you just have to wait a long time it's not as socially acceptable there but you can still manage. I've hitchhiked both in Spain and Italy and they were both awesome. It just takes more time to get picked up. What's the longest you ever waited? The longest I ever waited was actually three days in uh, a town called Fort Nelson. It's in northern British Columbia. I was trying to get to Alaska, but it was towards the end of summer and very few people were driving that direction. I didn't make it to Alaska. Nobody stopped for three days. I think a lot of people that I meet feel this comfort in the fact that I am a stranger. So sometimes the conversations that we have are deep and personal because the person feels comfortable to tell me and talk to me about things that they wouldn't necessarily feel comfortable to talk to their even their own friends about because they know that with me there's no judgment involved and that's something very rare. How often do people today speak for one hour or two hours to a complete stranger anywhere? Did you ever think you were going to die? I only had one scary situation. Let's hear it. The scary situation that I had was um, in Vietnam and this guy gave me right for an hour and a half. He barely spoke English and then after the ride he tried handing me a dollar like to help me and um, I told him no it's okay again take a dollar I didn't want to and then he physically and forcefully grabbed my hand trying to give me this money and in our culture it was not socially accept it's not acceptable to do that it was too aggressive so I turned around and walked away because I was trying to be polite and respectful by not arguing with him and by just walking away and then he walked in front of me and he started screaming at me in Vietnamese and I was for the first time like really scared because I didn't know why he was so upset and there was a circle of Vietnamese people around me and one of these people one of these one of the one person in the circle came to me with a phone and I answered the phone and then the person on the other line spoke English and I told them the situation and then she told me take his money and she told me you're being rude and disrespectful by not taking his money. So the same exact thing that I thought was being polite and respectful, he interpreted as being disrespectful and rude. So That's it's just insane. interesting that the same exact act can be interpreted completely opposite. That's a complete cultural difference right complete there. Complete cultural difference wow. right there. Good. I'm Drew Binsky, and if you like my travel videos, please click subscribe and join me as I plan to visit every country in the world.